Well, you would, you could, yeah, you could have either done the room or room. Yes. Oh my God, the room. The room. What a movie. Would have been way. Yeah, I can't tell you. I was just saying, James Franco is yes. now doing everything. Did you hear what he's doing next? Oh, the Zola. Yeah. Yeah. I went on my show. I literally just started writing a script at home. Great. Going over this whole Zola thing, and then it turns out oh. it's actually a movie already being made that James Franco is doing that after he does Tommy Wiseau. You got to you got to get on it. I know. You I've get- had Tommy Wiseau up here. <gasps> Tell yeah. me everything. Well, he was up here. I had him for like an hour. Okay. And just asked him every question. Imagine he came in with a football. He loves footballs and tossing them around. He tossed it to me across the the console. That scene where they're in the alley and just throwing the football back and forth in tuxedos yeah. for no reason. Sublime. <laughs> yeah. Sublime. But the whole time, like he's doing, he's completely Tommy Wiseau. Tommy yeah. Wiseau, of course. You all remember the director of The Room. Come it was, on. It's on YouTube, the whole thing. It's amazing. Um, but he, he, I'd like ask him a question. And then anytime I tried to follow up, well, like, Tommy, I'm not quite under sure. Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're saying. That, move on, next question. <laughs> like, okay, Tommy, well. <laughs> did you ask him which country he is from? I did. I said, well, he said he was American. And I said, Tommy, like, I don't think that the accent he's like i'm from new orleans that's what he always says that's he's what from he was saying he insisted he was from I've new orleans been to new orleans yeah i've spent a lot of time in new orleans and that's how they talk it isn't how they talk mm. no <laughs> no not at all i was like tom he's like i am american i was like i was like i don't think so and just when i was like he may be doing shtick though because i didn't meet him until he was on the air i yeah. said i don't want to meet him yeah until he comes on the show and i was like and then i was really curious about what was going to happen when we went to commercial break uh-huh and so I, I left the studio to go to the bathroom or whatever, and I came back, and he was still in the studio, just like talking to people. And I walk in the room, he's like, Sam, that was great. Do you want me to bless you? And I was like, yes, I do. And so he said, okay, put your head down. And so I kind of bowed my head to him, and he crossed me, and then he put a dog tag around my neck. And it's like a Tommy Wiseau logo dog tag. You got like a benediction from the Pope <laughs> yeah. of cult movies. Right. I was like, thank you, Oh my gosh. Tommy. He's given you the power. See, now you can go home and write a script. I know. You've been blessed I by know. Tommy. I'm obsessed with the whole, like I'm friends with Greg Sestero now. Oh, really? Like the whole the whole thing. Just, yeah. Just... Oh, no. I know. I'm so riveted by it. And um, one of my favorite things is that one of our camera operators from Community actually worked on The Room. No way. Yeah, so he's credited as the DP Uh um, on the movie. I think he was the third DP to work on the movie, but I would just grill him all the time about the movie, and then when the book came out, The Disaster Artist, he's mentioned in the book. I was about to ask if you read the book. Yeah, of course I read the book. Good. I have never laughed so hard. I My stomach hurt from laughing. Have, Have you listened to the audiobook? I haven't. You have to listen to the audiobook. Because Greg Sestero's Tommy Wiseau voice oh. is the greatest. Thing. Like I listened to it on a road trip, and yeah. it's full unabridged. Like it's yeah. hours and hours and hours, and it's it's in, it's it's incredible. It's, it's heaven. It's and it's funny because as someone who's done a lot of independent films, I've worked on sets that aren't that dissimilar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've I've been pretty close to uh, the conditions of the room, so it's just riveting to me. Yeah, I, I asked him too because you know the the story is that he. He was bragging because he was said he was the first person to build a rig so that he could film in film? 35 millimeter I, and HD video at the same time. I know. And then I go, I go, Tommy, I go, the Blu-ray's out for the movie. And he goes, yeah, you can buy the Blu-ray on the roommovie.com. And I was like, but you just used the film. And he goes, but we upgraded film so it looks even better. And I was like, but you shot it in HD. He's like, yes, we were first to do this. I was like, but you you didn't use the HD footage for the Blu-ray. Like you haven't used it at all. No, no, we haven't used yet. And I was like, so why would you use the? Why would you do that? Why would you use it in film? Film is better. I'm well, ju- I, all right, you have to light things differently too. You can't light the <laughs> right. same scene for film and HD. I mean, what does it even look like for HD? I don't know. Who knows what they were lighting it for? It's I can, like, can you just light it twice at the same time? So uh, technically, you both, gotta get. I mean, I don't, no wonder they went through three DPs. That yeah. would, I would be pulling my hair out. Yeah, and he owned all the equipment instead oh, yeah. of renting it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, if you're that rich, why rent? <laughs> right, right. Well, 
What was, what, was his, what, was his, what was his jeans company, like High Fashion USA or something? <laughs> in San Francisco, some right. some successful business. Right, I make money selling clothes. All I, right, Tommy, whatever uh, you say.